Hello, today I'm going to show you how I make beetroot wine. I'm Liz Zorab and this is By The Farm. And here is uh, a bottle I made before. Uh, so this video will show you the uh, processes that I went through uh, to produce this bottle of wine. Uh, it's taken uh, about 15 months to film um, and um, I don't actually drink alcohol anymore. Uh, I do taste it to make sure that it doesn't taste absolutely hideous before uh, I give it to Mr J. Beetroot wine uh, is a funny thing. I expected it to taste very earthy uh, or to taste of beetroots and it doesn't, it's actually very, very pleasant. There is no beetroot taste, there is a kind of, there is a fruity taste almost, um, but it's very lovely. The last year when we had a glut of beetroot, uh, I gathered uh, a quantity of beetroot and I took the leaves off the top of them uh, and shook off the worst of the soil on them and then brought them into the kitchen and gave them a really thorough wash. I then put them into a pan of boiling water and boiled them rapidly for about 15 minutes. Once they were cooked, uh, they went into a colander in the sink and cold water was put over them to cool them down very rapidly. That meant I was able to uh, rub the skins off them and uh, cut the tops and the bottoms off them, and cut them into small pieces. So all my chopped beetroot uh, went into a very large bowl and I covered it with boiling water, I covered it with a cloth over the top uh, and I let it sit for uh, about 24 hours uh, for the colour and the flavour to infuse into the water. And then I collected those juices uh, using a sieve And then all the rest of the, the beetroot I put into a pan, some hot water and boiled it up again so that I could extract uh, more juice from it, more flavour, more colour. And I did that until I ended up with about five pints of liquid. poured some of the liquid into a bowl and I started to add some sugar, uh, stirring it to dissolve it. I did that a couple of times and with the third pound of sugar that I was going to use, uh, I poured that into uh, the demijohn. If you like the recipe uh, that I've used to make this beetroot wine, uh, just sign up for the mailing list uh, it's in the information below. Uh, and I'll get that recipe straight to you. When you're making wine you need to make sure everything's really clean so I sterilised my demijohn before I used it. Um, so put the sugar in uh, and then started adding in uh, the beetroot juice. All that flavour and colour that we'd extracted from the beetroots, so that went in. And I took a little bit more uh, of that liquid and um, put it into a, a jug and I added my yeast. I gave that a good stir to dissolve it because I use a dried yeast and added that into the demijohn. And then uh, topped the demijohn up with the, uh, the liquid with the dissolved sugar in it. Filled the demijohn uh, up to its shoulders uh, just to give that yeast a bit of uh, time to get going to get working and if, <laughs> if it was going to bubble over I, I would rather it wasn't right at the top and leave that little gap uh, stops that from happening and 24 hours later uh, I topped it up to uh, this level. If you're enjoying this video uh, please give it a thumbs up or leave a comment 
and if you're not enjoying it, uh, please give me some feedback and let me know why. And if you're not a subscriber already, why not click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell and that way YouTube will inform you every time I put out a new video. So I then needed to put my airlock uh, in the top of the demijohn to uh, stop bacteria getting in. Uh, so you have a bung uh, and one of these. These come in different shapes uh, and sizes, but basically you push uh, the plastic bit into the bung. Make sure it's got a nice seal on it. Uh, and then you pour some water in. Now I actually fill it from that end because I find it easier. Uh, and you want the water to come to about halfway. Uh, and this means that the, uh, the gas is produced by the yeast can escape, but the air can't get in. And then you can uh, sit the little lid uh, back on top if you want to. Um, when you have a look at them, <laughs> they don't actually seal it tight. Uh, it, does allow <laughs> it does allow the gases to get out. Uh, most of the time I don't, I just leave it like that. Um, but you have then got the risk of things climbing in there, um, which can not be very pleasant. Anyway, so you put that in. <laughs> And it's as simple as that, uh, you have now started your wine, but beetroot wine can become discoloured and go quite brown. Um, so you need to block out the light. So I use the tea towel uh, wrapped around the demijohn, uh, one corner of the tea towel uh, tucked in uh, through one handle of the demijohn, and the other corner tucked in through the other handle. You then leave your wine uh, in a cool and preferably a darkish place. Uh, to ferment. The next thing to do is to rack your wine off. Now what that actually means is that you're going to take it uh, from one demijohn uh, and siphon it through to another and you're going to leave behind uh, any sediment that's in the bottom of it because you don't want that in your wine. Uh, you can repeat uh, the racking off process uh, two or three times uh, to get rid of uh, all the sediment in the bottom of your demijohns. Uh, so you should end up uh, with a really clear wine. When it's finished fermenting, and you'll know that because the bubbles uh, will no longer be going up through the airlock, uh, you can bottle it up. Uh, don't be in any rush uh, to bottle it up. Uh, if you've racked it off several times and there's almost no sediment in the bottom of your demijohn, uh, you can leave it sitting there for a good long time. Uh, and if you've been in too much of a hurry to get your wine into your bottles, uh, you may well find uh, when you open them, you'll hear a fizz, uh, or worse than that, you'll have masses and masses of bubbles uh, coming up. And that's of course when there is that the risk of the pressure building up so much uh, that your bottles can explode. So really, you know, it really is worth uh, with beetroot wine just waiting uh, and letting it sit for maybe several months before you bottle it up. And then, um, if you're going to put it in a in a clear bottle uh, like this one, it's worth covering it. Um, so I made <laughs> a. Uh, a tissue paper cover um, and then uh, it's literally just tissue paper with a bit of uh, sticky tape around it and then I put this in a very dark cupboard uh, to sit uh, and mature or an even better thing to do uh, is to use a dark bottle so a green or a brown bottle and uh, that will help exclude some of the light but all the same uh, it's worth storing it in a dark place and this is where you have to start being patient because the, the longer you leave that beetroot wine, uh, the nicer it's going to be. So I would suggest um, six to nine months minimum, um, 18 months would be ideal. And then you end up uh, with this rather beautiful, great tasting wine. <laughs>